Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll be taking you through the CSS overflow property. This property is very important when it comes to managing the content on your web page. CSS overflow plays a vital role. So in this video tutorial, we'll understand what this property is and what are the different values we can use for this property. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. So when creating a website, one of the most critical aspects is the layout of the content. Sometimes the content within a container might be larger than the container itself. In such cases, the CSS overflow property comes handy. This property allows web developers or this property allows us to specify how the content should behave when it exceeds the dimension of its container. So in other words, CSS overflow property is used to manage the content on a web page. So this property controls what actually happens to the content that is too big to fit for, for an area or we can say for a container. So this overflow property has four possible values. It can be visible, hidden, scroll and auto. So the default value is always visible, which means that the content will overflow outside the container. Then we have the hidden property. So the hidden value clips the content that exceeds the container bounds. So then we have the scroll prop value. The scroll value adds a scroll bar to the container, allowing users to scroll through overflowed content. Then at last we have the auto value, which is similar to the scroll value, but it only displays a scroll bar when the content overflows the container. So remember, the default value is always visible, not auto. So by using the overflow property, we can ensure that the content on our web page is displayed correctly, even if it exceeds the dimensions of its container. So this can help prevent layout issues and ensure that the content is easily accessible and readable for the user. So enough of this theory part, I guess. Let's understand this with the help of examples. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a division over here, then we'll add some text to it and then we'll see how the overflow property works. We'll go through all the four values. Fine. So here what we'll do is we'll create a div tag. Let's use the class elements. And we'll write here div1, lorem50, just use this para. So we have this paragraph present over here. The next thing we have to do is to use the style tag here. Then we'll access our div tag with the help of class name, which is div1. And then we'll write over here height. Height, let's suppose we are giving it 90 pixels. Then we have the width of this div tag. Let's suppose we are giving it 200 pixels. We are making a rectangle. Let me just resize this first. This, what we can say, viewport or this browser of ours. Then we'll write over here border. Border is going to be one pixel solid and black in color. Then we have to set the background color to distinct this particular container. So let's say we are using beige over here. Save it. And here you can see. So if I zoom in, here you can see we have a container. This is the size of our container and the text. So you can see the text is overflowing out of the container. So we can't, the text is not consistent inside the container. So what we can do is we can just write over here overflow. Overflow is, if I put it as hidden, save it. And here you can see, now it's not overflowing, but we are not able to see the whole content inside the div tag. So we have four different values, right? This was just an example, just save it. And here you can see we have a, what we can say, a division with some text present inside it. So here you can see we have this paragraph present inside our division, but you can see it's overflowing the area covered by the division, right? The text is overflowing. So in that case, we have four CSS properties. The first one is visible. So this is the default property. If I write here overflow, and if I write here visible as the value, so nothing will change because what we are trying to do is we are asking the system or the browser to show the content to the uh, user in this way. So it, if it's visible, then it's fine. We are not doing anything. We are not changing anything. So this is the default value. That's why we said earlier. 
So by default, the overflow is always visible. It means that it is not clipped and it renders outside the elements box. Simple for the visible property. The next property we have is the hidden property. So with the hidden property, the overflow is clipped and the rest of the content is hidden. So if I write here overflow as hidden, so here you can see we have these different values. If I write here hidden, you will see that we will be able to see this part of our paragraph, but this part will go hidden. So let's just check it, save the program and here you can see we are able to see this part only. We are not able to scroll it down. We are just not able to see the other part. It's fine of the paragraph. So this property might come handy at times, but not every time it will come handy to you guys. The next value we have is the scroll. So this one is the best, or we can say the second best because we have the auto property as well for this. So if I write here scroll, let me just cut it from here first, save it. And here you can see we have the same paragraph again, which is overflowing out of the content area. Save it now with the scroll and here you can see we have two scroll bars, one along the X axis and one along the Y axis which is not working. So here you can see we have a scroll bar. Now we are able to see the whole content at least, right? So we are able to scroll it down to see the content of the paragraph. For hidden, we, are not, we were not able to do it, right? If you guys remember. So the next property or we can say the next value for the overflow property we have is the auto value. So before we move on to auto value, let me just give you a simple definition of scroll. So setting the value to scroll, it means that the overflow will be clipped and a scroll bar will be added to the scroll inside the box. Now you will have to note this that this, this property will add a scroll bar both vertically and horizontally. So here you can see we have a horizontal scroll bar as well, right? Along the X axis we can say and one we have vertically along the Y axis we can say. I'll tell you why I'm using these terms X axis and Y axis in a moment. But before that, let's understand the auto property. So the auto value is similar to scroll, but it adds scroll bars only when necessary. It won't add if you, the scroll bar is not needed, it will not add it. So let me just write here overflow as auto and save it. You can see we have scroll bar along the Y axis only, or we can say we have vertical scroll bar only. So we are not having the horizontal scroll bar. That's the benefit of using the auto property over the scroll value. Fine. So if you will write auto, it will understand it accordingly and it will apply the styling accordingly. So here you can see we have only one scroll bar, which is vertical and that's fine, right? Now the next thing we have is we have two more properties. We can use overflow X and overflow Y. What does this overflow X and overflow Y mean? So the overflow X and overflow Y property specifies whether to change the overflow of content just horizontally or vertically or both. So we can specify the, these different properties differently and we can use different values for both of them. So let me just show you with an example. If I write here overflow X, now it will specify what to do with the left right edges of the content. So if I write here overflow X as hidden, save it. Here you can see the overflow X is hidden. Now what we have to do is we have to write here visible ones, save it. And here you can see it's not working because it's auto. And if I increase the size, you can see there's no difference. Let's just reduce the width ones, save it. And here you can see the content is adjusting itself according to the width. But overflow X is always used to manage the content horizontally. The other one we have is overflow Y. So if I write here for overflow Y, let's say I'm writing scroll over here, save it. And here you can see now we have only one scroll bar, which is present horizontally, or we can say along the Y axis. That's because we are using the overflow Y property. So this is how we can use the overflow property. Then we have four different values overflow for overflow of property. We have visible, we have hidden, we have scroll, we have auto. And then we have two other properties overflow X and overflow Y, which are used to manage the content according to the directions. So I hope you guys must have got a good idea about the CSS overflow property. You must have understood what this property is and why we use it. If you still have any doubts related to any of the topics or any of the property we have covered in this particular tutorial, then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and our team of experts will definitely answer them for you. 
सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग हेयर गाइज एंड सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम विद समर वीडियोज अंटिल देन कीप कोडिंग एंड स्टेट यून टू सिंपली कोड थैंक यू